All right, so a few people have been asking me about how I grind blades. Uh, you'll have to excuse the fact that I'm actually not in the footage real close because, well, I'm not putting my expensive lens in the shop to get dust covering it. So anyway, here's what's going on. I am going to take one of my smaller blades. Uh, this is already rough ground out. It's been heat treated uh, and it has that sweeping plunge that people keep talking about. And it is on both sides. I guess you guys can see that. Um, I plan on doing it with <clears throat> this little blade. Uh, and before we get much further, some of you can probably see that there is a, uh, a notch, or not a notch, a, uh, I, I left meat there. And there's one thing I found that uh, on these thin knives, uh, these are 332nd XHP, that uh, in heat treat, sometimes the tip can get a little, you know, wonky on me. So I just leave it thick. It doesn't take much to grind it off. Uh, but you can see the preheat treat grind is, is only about a little more than half an inch, not quite three quarters of an inch tall uh, on both sides there. So I still have nice surface to clamp to in the aluminum plates to get the heat to transfer, and it's less grinding I have to do. So uh, I try to do, do it that way. Um, I'm going to do as much talking as I can now due to the fact that once I get my respirator on and fire up the grinder, I'm pretty sure you guys aren't going to be hearing anything. Um, but in a nutshell, is I'm laying my finger just on the edge. Now, I don't round the spine on this for a reason as I'm first starting to grind, because it can catch. It catches your finger uh, and won't slide off as quick. But uh, I basically, I'm just going to be holding it. And as I work my way towards the tip, I will be rotating slightly and it is ever so slight uh, and also as I get a little further along and I want this plunge to go along this way I will actually angle the blade this uh, 45 degrees down and it sounds a little weird at first but after you get the hang of it and I will be distal tapering um, and going from there. I'm also going to try and take footage from uh, behind the, the plat in there so you can see from the other angle uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well this works for me since I haven't tried to do uh, blades on video like this before. So hopefully it works out and we'll have a little footage. Okay, so uh, what I just did quick off camera on an old belt was I took the, the tip off of uh, that, that extra meat there on the tip. I took that off with an old belt so I don't strip fresh grit off of a brand new belt. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be following the preheat treat bevel and then I'll be working it up towards the spine uh, as I go out to the tip. And like I said, you can see how I, I kind of hold things and how I grind things. Um, I'm gonna, I have a, a towel over my, my camera right now, so I'm hoping it doesn't make the sound too awful horrible. Uh, although if it cuts some of the sound from the grinder, that'd probably be a good thing. Um, so, all right, well, here we go. I'm going to put my respirator and my goggles on, get this thing fired up, and uh, do some grinding for you.
Okay, so a little bit more uh, going on here. I switched the camera around. I uh, wanted to uh, show you now. This is the uh, non-ground, well, heat treat ground side. This is the other side. Uh, I did manage to get a little thin over here, but that's all right. But as far as thin goes, I've got preset my my caliper here at 20 thou, and uh, it already is well under 20 thou at the edge. I mean, these kitchen knives, thin, 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 thin. So, uh, the next step I'm going to be doing is, of course, the other side, and then what I will show you is uh, how I actually uh, blend that in. And in a nutshell, uh, I'm, I'm not going to do it with this belt. This is a 50 grit. Uh, I usually use the 120 as part of my cleanup, uh, and I, I grind the handle flat. That way we have a nice flat uh, surface to put the scales on. So I'll run that the whole way out until it starts to tip. Um, and then what I'll do is I actually just come in and I just rock it back and forth to blend this thing in at a slight angle uh, to, to remove any line. There is hardly any uh, groove there. Like there's, there's no plunge really to, to say uh, or to see. So it's just uh, basically you see the heat treated uh, surface and the clean surface. So uh, here we'll go. We'll see if we can't do this again. And I'll fire this up, get the respirator on, and uh, see if I can't manage to screw something up this time.
trying to, to show you there, uh, as I was slightly convexing things in, uh, towards the edge you can see the scratch pattern is different, at least I hope you can see that from over there. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, so since I guess we've got plenty of time here, I will throw on a, uh, a 120 and uh, refine this a little bit more and show you how, how I uh, round that out since it won't take that long to do. Now I'm running my grinder at 80 hertz. Uh, everything's stock KMG stuff, uh, except for, like I said, the variable speed is not at 60 hertz. I'm running at over speed at 80, and uh, I'll only use this belt at one or at the the over speed, and that'll be the last belt that I, uh, I run that fast. Uh, you still have to make sure you have very hot or very sharp belts, or else uh, you overheat stuff. Um, big, big, big fan of use belts like the free because. Uh, you know, if you've got to press too hard uh, to, to make that belt last a little bit longer, what have you saved? I mean, you overheat a blade, ruin it. Well, well, cost of a belt, seven, eight bucks each for good ones. So, you know, you, you, you do the math there real quick. Screwing up one, one knife can, uh, you know, you can pay for a lot of belts with one, one uh, knife. So let's get going. So that's the fairly painless way to do that. Uh, as I work my way up through the grits and I use gator belts after this, uh, you can actually also put a, a soft platen liner behind it, uh, like a piece of denim or you know some people use graphite, and it gives just a hair, uh, and you can blend those in just a little bit better. Uh, but you know what? You know you get real close at this point, uh, especially if you're going to hand sand. Then if you're going to hand sand a soft backer on that, you're going to blend all that in right quick and uh, you'll never have to worry about uh, that. The big thing is you want to make sure I guess I got that up high enough, you want to make sure that uh, you don't run that plunge too far back onto the flat area or you have some issues with scales fitting uh, and leaving gaps. So I guess that's the, the download dirty uh, blended in uh, plunge. So there's really not a whole lot to it but like a lot of people will tell you uh, you know, do it a couple hundred times and it's easy.